Welcome back to Rangeless. I'm Britt. And I'm Ryan. And it is officially official. We are jumping off on our Southeast Asia Asian adventure full-time travel for the next five months. But we have a little bit of a stopover before we get to our final destination where we're going to spend a month. So but what's our stopover? We have an eight-hour layover in Singapore. And we are going to optimize as much as we can in Singapore while we're there. So if you want to follow us along on our adventure, don't forget to like and subscribe. Be sure to check your visa requirements for Singapore before your trip if you plan on leaving the airport. Me and Britt fly on American and EU passports, so we're lucky enough not to require visas to visit Singapore. We just landed in Singapore, almost eight o'clock. We have to board our flight at two, so we need to get back at noon. So we need to figure out how to get into the city. So there's a few ways you can do it. You can take a Grab, which is like an Uber. You can take a private car, or you take public transit. It takes about an hour each way. So that's what we're gonna do. And it's the most affordable. We were told by the MRT staff that we had to buy a tourist pass in order to use the MRT. However, at $22 per person for one day, it wasn't worth it for us. We found out we could use our credit cards to tap to pay at each turnstile for the MRT without issue. So this is the end of the line. So you just get on any train, you're gonna go out. Yeah, either train takes you towards the city. Where's our end goal? Is like Bayfront area? Yeah. But right. we only we we only ride this for one stop. We're and then get we off. change to the blue line. Yeah, to the downtown line. Right, and, and then, then we ride. And then it's nineteen stops. So then we're on there for like thirty minutes, and then we're like a few minute walk from our destination. Cool. Yeah. What happened was is I've been here like uh, quite a few times, and but all pre COVID, and then they changed how everything ran. Yeah, and they don't is, sell the single ride tickets from the booth anymore. We went to the, the the machine and that said local 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 cards credit cards only. only. So then that was only for re-upping your like travel pass, like your, yeah, your like your commuter pass or whatever yeah. it is. And then, but they also have contactless on each gate. So if you have a Visa card or a Mastercard, you just anywhere it. it just works. The only thing is, then you don't immediately know how much it's charging you. No, there's no screen. It doesn't say how much exactly, but I can't imagine it's too crazy. No. But also, fun thing is you can't use the same credit card back to back for two people. No, you have to use two have different, to use credit, different credit, card. credit cards. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that. And one. also, foreign transaction fees. You want a credit card without any foreign transaction fees for little things like that. Next station, Expo. Change to go. Next station for the downtown line. So you've been in in. Asia for 15 minutes. Hectic. Yeah. Well, the place is fairly relaxed, but it's been hectic for us. We are on a limited, limited time. The MRT is one of the nicest public transit systems in the world. The trains are spotless and run on time. There's no issues with crime or safety. However, there are a few things to know. You're not allowed to eat or drink on the train. Not even a sip of water and there are steep fines for violators. Also, the seats marked in red are for elderly, pregnant, or mobility impaired passengers, so do not sit on them. Downtown, around and downtown. To get to the city center, you have to change trains after one stop at Expo to the downtown line. The MRT is both the most affordable and efficient way to get around Singapore. It only cost us $1.93 in Singapore dollars each to go all the way from the airport to Bayfront. Connected to Bayfront MRT station, there is a huge mall with an indoor river that has boats that travel through the mall. But we were on a mission to find the super trees, so we didn't go exploring the mall. Let's go see the Garden of the Bays. Bays of the Garden Gardens at the, at the bay. Gardens by the bay. Gardens by the bay. I'm tired.
You get off the MRT at Bayfront exit, you walk up and you can get right to the super trees. We are not acclimated to the heat nor dressed for it. Or the humidity. It's not that hot, but it is humid today. Yeah, I don't remember you being like, oh yeah, talking about like humid and stuff. I'm like, no, you haven't been to Asia. You don't know humid. It's not even that bad today. Yeah. What do you think? Was I exaggerating when I said that? Right now it's, it's bad. <laughs> I'm wearing jeans and a, and a long sleeve button down. Yeah. Continue on her walk. These are the super trees, which are really cool at night. They like light up and they do like a whole light show. And it's free to come here and walk around, but not free to go on the walk up there. But I'm not mad at it, it's like a whole jungle. Gardens by the Bay is a huge futuristic nature park with attractions like the Flower Dome, the largest greenhouse in the world, home to plants from five continents, and Super Tree Grove, a man-made vertical garden up to 50 meters in height, connected by an elevated skyway. The Singaporean government built this park as an example of how modern technology can exist and flourish alongside nature, and the result is a stunning futuristic utopia of sustainability. sign of a clean, well-balanced ecosystem. Due to their highly sensitive skin, frogs only thrive in healthy lakes. I like frogs. These plants, they're called something soap, but they're really neat because when you squeeze them, they hold a lot of moisture and the moisture will come out of them. See? And it like feels soapy. It smells good too. Okay, I have options. We can either go to Merlion Park or we can go into Chinatown. To go to Chinatown, we just get back on the train we got off of. To go to Merlion Park, we either have to walk 12 minutes to a bus station and then walk eight minutes to get there, or it's a 30 minute walk to get there. So it just depends on how much energy you have after an 11 hour flight on top of a seven hour flight. I wanted to see the Merlion, but I don't want to work, walk half an hour. Okay. We only have a certain amount of time yeah, left. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're tight for time. Let's head so, to Chinatown first. Let's head to Chinatown, let's hop on back on the- And if we have time, then we'll go Yeah, that. let's hop back on the MRT we just got off of. Cool. So cool, we'll walk back through the park. We're gonna go and try to find a hawker, which is... It's like a food court, and all of the stalls are make different food. They're usually family owned, and they're a little bit of a dying tradition here in Singapore. The hawkers are famous. You get everything from like, you can get a Michelin star meal for $8, like equivalent, like US. A lot of the kids, while they like, their parents do them, and they don't wanna like go into the business anymore, so hawkers are kinda dying out, but they're part of the culture. I don't know about you, but I am starving. I've only had airplane food for the last 24 hours. I'm very excited about getting some good food. to the food center. We have found a hawker, thank goodness. I love them so much because so, it's like a giant cafeteria style eating with a bunch of different foods and all of them tend to be family owned and they really are affordable. So we're gonna go find one or two that look really good and then I also want some kind of like tea or juice or something because I am parched from this heat and humidity. Let's start with a nice tea. 
we're getting Roselle tea. It's like a hibiscus. That's so refreshing. I love this stuff. One of the strategies you can use in a hawker if it's a little overwhelming is you find a spot with a really long line. Get in the line and wait. It's gonna be good. I see a spot that has that and I think we maybe should go for it because it looks really affordable and really delicious. And now I have a tea so I'm ready for anything. So this is my first time being in an authentic hawker in Asia. It's really cool. It looks like all small family owned vendors, very affordable price and a huge range of food. Place where all the locals are, it's authentic our local cuisine. Hawkers can be super overwhelming with all the decisions, all the people, they're super loud, there's a lot going on, but we managed. First place we went to, we got noodles and this shukai, which is some type of like yam dumpling situation. They both were a dollar and change, so they came out to be like three dollars altogether, a little bit under. Then we went to a different stand, and we got some wontons with noodles. It looks like a little bit of baby bok choy, some chili oil, and some soup broth. Wanted to keep it a little bit basic because we are getting back on a plane today, so don't want to go too wild. These are very cute little chopsticks. I want to try some of these noodles, and like I don't know what this sauce is. Oh, that's nice sauce. It doesn't really taste like much. It's just kind of sweet, almost like a teriyaki sauce. And they also put a little bit of chili on the side. It's like peanutty fried noodles. Freaking delicious. <laughs> and I really want to try this too. Let's see. All right. I don't really know what's inside of this, but I think it's some type of like yam dumpling. Bring it over closer. So the outside tastes kind of like a, a rice cake, which some people with the texture of it, I like it, but it's a little like gel gelatinous, a little like jelloey, which I like, but I know some people can be a little funny. And then I think it's yam on the inside. If I'm wrong, tell me, but. It's delicious either way. I'm gonna dip it in some of this chili I got. Give it a little spice. So spicy. So good, it's like chili with like a fish sauce. Ryan's looking at me, literally licking his lips. I think it's time you try some of this food. My first hawker meal. I'm very excited. Start with this, noodles. Struggling here with the chopsticks. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. Peanut sauce with noodles, and there's some sort of sweet sauce down here. Not sure what it is. It was one one Singapore dollar and twenty cents. Oh, that's good value. Yeah. <laughs> and this thing was also one Singapore dollar and twenty cents. The dumpling. Yeah, I remembered. Yeah, it's a te texture of like a wonton, but and then it's kind of a little bit crunchy on the inside from like the yams, but it's good. Dip it in the spicy sauce. Get that sauce. Well, that's good. That sauce is really good. Yeah. Ah, I like that. Mix it in with these noodles. And these are a little like, I don't know, I think they're shrimp wonton. Yeah? Yeah, you want one? Mm. Shrimp wonton. Mm -hmm. Good. Really good. And then so it comes with the little soup. So you can either sip on the soup like separate or you can put your ingredients, like you can dip it into the soup and like eat it that way and like make your little like... Let me try this. Let me try this. That's good. I don't have much more to say. We're gonna eat. So, BRB. We are headed for Jewel inside of the airport by Terminal 2. It's like a mall kind of thing, but if you've ever seen the pictures or videos of like 
the big waterfall. They have like a, a butterfly garden. They have a sky walk type thing. Tallest indoor waterfall. Yes, that's what we're gonna go see. <coughs> I've been to it before, but it'll be Ryan's first time. And I feel like it's one of those like must do things. Turbo boost. Oh, wow. Oh, that is cool. Oh, look at that. Wow. It looks like one of the trains comes through here too, on the track. That's cool. And it goes all the way downstairs too. Yeah. Jewel Changi is a futuristic nature themed shopping and entertainment destination with its crown jewel, the rain vortex encircled by a terrace garden spanning five stories. It is breathtaking to witness and with the sky train passing through the valley, it feels more like science fiction than reality. That was our eight hour layover in Singapore. I think we absolutely killed it for really only having four hours by the time you add in like getting to the city and like having to get back. And we have a flight to catch really soon, but message down below like what you would do in your eight hour layover in Singapore or what you did differently when you were here. All right, we have to go. We, have to, we literally have a plane to catch like now. So don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on all our adventures because together we're, we're rangeless. rangeless.